Boys, we have got monumental news on our hands. Ollie Palmer has been confirmed a move to Wrexham. What is up, Dons Nation? It's Jaggy here, and I mean, this was coming, right? This this was coming. This has been a rumor that has been circulating for about a month now, and a lot of times transfer rumors, you know, they'll 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 come and go. They'll come around for a few days, and then they'll die out. Uh, the Anthony Hardigan to Bolton rumor was, you know, it, it was for a, it lasted a day and then it faded away. Jack Radoni, some rumblings about potentially going to another club. No, uh, no club has actually expressed their interest in signing Radoni, but there are a lot of rumors that he's going to be leaving. Those rumors have been trickling around longer, so it's likely that will happen by the end of the transfer window. Uh, the Ollie Palmer transfer has been around for quite a while now. And uh, right before the Portsmouth game, uh, there was a report that Wrexham wanted to buy him for about 180,000 pounds. And I, I was the first one to say, okay, Ollie Palmer being signed is not a bad idea, but we need more than 180K. I actually said on uh, the AFC Wimbledon Nine Years podcast pre-match show, uh, the Portsmouth one, that we need to uh, put up at least 250,000 for him. As yes, he is a bit of an injury-prone man, and he's only scored three goals in the season, count four with the Burton game. But, you know, he's still a man that possesses quality when he's on his day. He's a bit hot and cold, but when he's on his day, he is a solid striker. He's fairly nimble, fairly quick for a big man, and uh, maybe not the best in the air. But And then he's going to be obviously going to a National League side, so... Even though Wrexham are a smaller club on paper, they do have a lot of money for National League standards. And, you know, 250000 plus seems fairly reasonable for someone like Oli Palmer and what he can bring to the table. Especially with our question marks in the striking department. I know we have Terry Ablade now, and I know we have Aaron Crosgrave that came out uh, off of loan, but neither of them are established yet. Yes, they can break out to be fantastic strikers, especially Ablade, who I've, I haven't seen very much of, but I've been very impressed with him from what I've seen. Uh, I think, you know, he's fairly active, gets stuck in a challenge, willing to uh, work work hard. He's a workhorse, but Oli Palmer was our only really established striker, right? And I think um, upping the bid to 300000 and us accepting that, I think it's a good move. Uh, I know some people will not be too happy with the decision, considering that we are a fan-owned club after all. And, you know, making this kind of transfer, this lucrative of a transfer, can go against some of our morals, perhaps. But I think that the the notion behind us being a fan-owned club, I think it can only go so far, right? There's a point, there's a threshold that we need to kind of step over a little bit because we need to do what's best for the club sometimes. And if we, and if it means giving away our best striker that we have for three hundred thousand pounds, which I think is actually quite a bit for Oli Palmer, I think uh, two hundred thousand probably would have been a fair price. I said 250 plus uh, would have been what we need to strive for. And we did hit that 300. Uh, but, you know, there are times in which we need to try to fend for ourselves. And this is a great move for us. Hopefully we'll have a striker waiting in the wings, perhaps a John Marquis, uh, perhaps, I don't know, just any striker that can kind of fit the bill as a target man that Ollie Palmer was able to fit at times, but in other times, you know, kind of got shrugged off and wasn't active enough off the ball. And uh, quite frankly, played a little too deep sometimes and wasn't able to put himself in good areas inside the 18-yard box for a cross. Um, you know, I like this move personally. Could we potentially have Joe Piggott as well on a loan spell, perhaps? I think we would be able to fit his wages now. Uh, I, you know... In my opinion, I would rather have Marquis over uh, Piggott. I know Piggott. Piggott is Piggott, right? And, you know, he is an absolute staple for our side. He is a club legend. But I think if we were to have Marquis, we were to sign Marquis for a two-year contract instead of having Piggott on loan for a year, I do think that perhaps it would be a little bit better for our longevity and for our just overall stability in the striking department. Uh, but we'll see. I think either of them could be decent options for us. And if we don't sign a striker, which I think it would be criminal if we don't, but in the case we in the case that we don't, it's it's tricky because we have Aaron Presley, we have Cosgrave, and uh, we have Terry Ablade. 
I'm not going to go as far as to say that we're going to be relegated, but I think we're going to be scrapping and fighting for it. It's definitely going to be a battle if we do not sign a striker to uh, replace Ollie Palmer. But I do think that Terry Ablade has some upside. And with uh, Ollie Palmer's exit, do I think it's time for a two up front now? Uh, I would pump the brakes a little bit. I think <sighs> Mark Robinson really should have put, you know, should have tried a two up front with Ollie Palmer, maybe with Ablade as uh, a man that can you know, provide the support, can help him with the knockdowns, you know, if, if uh, and if uh, Ole Palmer drops deep, you'll have someone like Terry Oblade up top to try to, you know, have that incisive through ball being played, because when Ole Palmer drops deep, we don't really have somebody inside the 18-yard box making a run inside unless you see, like, uh, Rodoni or Sal hooking towards the center, but it doesn't work very often, and, um, you know, two up front, I, I think maybe not as appealing now that Ollie Palmer has left the club. But you could see Aaron Presley acting as the target man now. I think, um, you know, he's a little bit more reliable in the air. Uh, maybe not as uh, athletic, athletically gifted and also not as clinical. Uh, Aaron Presley has disappointed me when he's gotten in areas to shoot. A lot of times he would hit it straight at the keeper or he would hit it over the bar. Uh, but, you know, having someone like Aaron Presley to win the knockdowns and having, having Terry Oblade making an incisive run so that, you know, McCormick or Sal, once they receive the knockdown from someone like Presley, can play him in. Uh, you know, four, uh, two up front could still work. Uh, maybe Mabude, uh, if we were to play a one up top, continue to have him as an outside mid and have a Sal come off as a, uh, as a bench player. I think that has worked out pretty well as of late. Mabude hasn't been... Breaking the bank per se, he's gotten in good areas a couple of times with his pace, but he hasn't done anything with it as of yet. He did have a decent opportunity to score against Burton uh, early in the, the first half. I think it was about the tenth minute or so, just wide of the the uh, the post as he took a nice heavy touch inside. Uh, but I think Mabude, you know, while he is a little bit inconsistent, he does pose a, a decent threat on that wide area on uh, any given moment. So. Do I think that AFC Wimbledon will implement a two up top now that Ole Palmer is gone? Uh, you, th you know, I'm not entirely sure, right? I do think that having a, playing a two up top would have been better with Palmer due to the fact that he likes to drop deep a lot. And or I shouldn't say maybe he likes to, but he was kind of forced to under our system, under Mark Robinson's system. He did uh, drop deep a lot, so we didn't really have someone in the box. Uh, but if we're going to go based on past performances, I still don't think that a 4-2-3-1 will be the answer with Presley up top. Due to the fact that he's not clinical. If he were more clinical, absolutely. If Ole Palmer were better in the air, absolutely. But unfortunately, you have two sides of the coin with Palmer being uh, pretty clinical but not good enough in the air and Presley being good in the air but not clinical. Why am I holding a piece of paper? But uh, Presley not being clinical enough. And so now I think is the time to start implementing that, that two up top. I think that's going to be the better decision here with uh, Presley winning the knockdowns and with uh, Ablade being played in by whoever wins the knockdown or maybe Ablade will win the knockdown and one of the outside mids can hook towards the center and make a run so we'll see at dn35 gtfc this is absolutely incredible business your negotiating team should get a few drinks so you got 40 likes on that and two replies quite the good ratio there at Craigie Jones 17, I think most Wrexham fans know we've had to pay well over the odds for him. January is far more difficult to buy as clubs, understandably, don't want to sell their good players and disrupt the season. It's obviously a player Phil Parkinson really wanted, so and so on his head be it. You know, Phil Parkinson up the ante. You know, 108,000 wasn't good enough. 250 perhaps wasn't good enough. 300, boom. AFC Wimbledon took it. At Wrexham AFC 4, I think it suits both clubs. We need him to get out of this hellhole of a league, and it's chump change, to be honest. Should get you a decent player to replace, too. I think, yeah, Wrexham fans certainly are very happy with this move because, you know, Ole Palmer is, I'd say, a high-end League 2 player, low-end League 1 player. Uh, you know, he's a mid-tier League 1 player on his day, but he's just not consistent enough. Uh, consistent enough. So yeah, I certainly think this suits both sides. You know, Wrexham have a bunch of money to burn for a National League side, so that could certainly help them uh, help them with their promotion push. Now on the negative side, uh, I did mention about how we are a fan-owned club and that a few fans may not be a huge fan of this particular move. And at Brooklyn Don, who I have actually reviewed a couple of his comments in the past, 
says, we are a fan-owned club, and the fans will not be happy about selling Palmer. Well, some fans certainly won't be. Uh, the CEO told us that we understood that we didn't sell for the money, uh, but because the player got a huge offer and wanted to leave. That, that does kind of play a little bit into it, too. Ollie Palmer um, you know, wasn't necessarily happy with the service that he's been getting and honestly wasn't happy with the club in general. And um, there was a comment that a uh, Oxford Oxford fan made on one of my uh, videos saying that Ollie Palmer, you, you know, that the team looked disorganized and, uh, you know, Mark Robinson was standing on the sidelines, arms crossed and not giving directions. That's just how Mark Robinson is. But one thing that he was correct on is that, you know, Ollie Palmer, uh, you know, scre you know, was kind of having a bit of a, a shouting match with Mark Robinson as he came off. Surely, surely a bit of frustration that the game didn't go well, but it's just a testament to how he wasn't happy with the club. You got to admit, it was a little bit for the money too. Like, you know, the club didn't accept that 180K bid at first. They wanted more for someone like Palmer, considering their lack of striking depth. Uh, unfortunate to reveal the price, but unavoidable. I don't think, you know, I don't think it's unfortunate. Actually, I think it's a good thing that uh, the, the club revealed the price. So now we have a better perspective on, uh, you know, how much we have on our transfer budget and our wage budgets uh, now. You know, it's, it's good for the fans to know, in my opinion, at least how much this deal was done for. And uh, at Ryan McGinty, not unfortunate at all. A fan-owned club should release that information to the fans. Yes, uh, other clubs know the figure. So that could, you know, allow other clubs to, to kind of work around it and be like, okay, uh, especially the clubs in the, uh, the relegation zone, they can kind of study that and they can perhaps, uh, you know, put their spy glasses on perhaps and be like, hmm, okay. But I still think that it's better for the fans to know, just for some reassurance. At Andy Mono High, love the fact that the fee is announced. No uh, cloak and dagger hidden fees the way it should be. At Dracus 1971, new Wimbledon policy, sick of the BS. Good to decent Wrexham fans when it inevitably goes horribly wrong again. I think a lot of fans have certainly backed this uh, transfer. And yes, we are going to miss Palmer. That's not to say that we're going to be like, oh yeah, off you go, Palmer. Screw you. You did nothing for the club. Uh, I think, you know, most fans will have a little bit of a sense of sadness that he is going to leave. But, it, you know, for 300000 I think we'll take that and we will certainly run with it. Hopefully we can sign a good striker. That's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed my rambling. You know, I did talk quite a bit. Uh, I kind of got lost in thought every now and again. But I wanted to express my uncensored uh, opinions on this transfer. I didn't know, you know, no jump cut. Well, there might have been one or two jump cuts uh, whenever I was pausing and trying to, you know, collect my thoughts a little bit. But for the most part, uncensored thoughts, unfiltered thoughts. And, you know, I, I personally, I know generally speaking, I take the optimistic side of things whenever AFC Wimbledon makes a, uh, you know, a hard decision, a tough decision. But this is probably one of the uh, decisions that I've, I'm more convicted in uh, than other decisions where I'm like, yeah, let's stay positive, even though there are reasons to be negative. I think there are plenty more pros than cons about this transfer, at least in the long term, right? There is a bit of a risk that we're taking here with uh, selling Palmer in the sense that maybe we won't have the striking depth and that we won't find a replacement uh, for him and that, yeah, we could potentially have a higher chance of getting relegated. But again, it was a combination of the two factors that A, was for money, and B, Ollie Palmer wanted out anyway. So I, you know, I have a feeling if AFC Wimbledon were to have forced Ollie Palmer to stay, that certainly wouldn't have been good for the dressing room. That certainly would have, wouldn't have been good for Ollie Palmer in the sense that he probably won't perform nearly to uh, the, the highest of expectations that we want him to considering his uh, lack of chemistry there. So yeah, Ollie Palmer wanted out. He has a, he has a home that, you know, he rented out over there in Wrexham and yeah. So I think it's a good move. I think it's a good move. Thank you guys for watching. The live stream against Ipswich will be on tomorrow. I know I missed the Burton one. I am uh, recovering from COVID. I'm almost fully recovered, thankfully. Um, and we'll see how that game goes. And we'll play against the Pigs, hopefully for the last time, as uh, perhaps he can come back to us for a little bit. Okay, that being said, see you guys in the next one.